very first thing I did after college was a, I played with a trumpet player named Taigro Koshi. He's a Japanese trumpet player. He's very famous and uh, also great composer. You know, his music was a big influence on not only me, but a lot of people. Then I moved to New York and I started to play with Billy Cobham. I still play with Billy Cobham. Then after Billy Cobham, I started to work with a lot of different people. I still play with Roberta Flack sometimes. Bill Evans, we did, uh, I think, two or three records together. And Eric Clapton, I only played with one time, but it was a, kind of a big television show. When you play on your own music, uh, it's more um, intense because you have, you have an opportunity to express yourself the way you see music, that's really an, an important difference. I mean, whether you play as a sideman or you play as a leader, you still play and sound like yourself. But the concept of the music is different because, you know, if you're playing for a different leader, then he has a concept. And if you're playing with your music, it's your concept. So that's the big difference. Good question. I always thought I was going to be a rock and roll star. <laughs> but uh, when I was a kid, I heard of three records that kind of changed my direction. One of them was uh, Intermounting Flame, which was a Mahavishnu Orchestra. And another one was West Montgomery, a record called Smokin' at the Half Note. And then there was another record, and probably the most important one was uh, a record called Coltrane. So those three records kind of changed my direction and so I, I ended up uh, playing more instrumental music because of that. Fusion that made sense to me was that I came from rock and so fusion was had rock elements. It made more sense for me to move into that direction. I guess I, I don't like this word but but I'll use it since it's uh, everybody knows it's straight ahead jazz. You know this uh, people you know, they call, you know, acoustic jazz, straight ahead jazz, but uh, I don't really like that term because it makes it sound not great. It's very important to me. I, I teach because I feel that uh, it's important for musicians that are actually performers to teach. There's teachers that only teach. And they're important, too, because they have so much information, you know, uh, academic information. But I think the student also needs to hear about the perspective of a actual working musician. And I think uh, it's, it's really important. Plus, I think since I'm older now, I should teach so that I can tell younger people, you know, about my experience. So I think it's very important to teach. And I really enjoy teaching. The other vicarious benefit of teaching is that I learn a lot because people are always asking new questions. I have to actually come up with a, a reason for many of the things that I do. And I have to have a uh, justification for it. It's a mutual benefit. The thing is, is that record came out a couple years ago. At that time, I wanted to make sure there was some music that I had that hadn't been recorded yet, and I wanted to make sure that it got on a record. I have a band in uh, in Los Angeles with uh, Marvin Smitty Smith, the great drummer Marvin Smitty Smith, bassist Hadrian Ferro, keyboardist Jerry Etkins, and some other bass players also play, you know, uh, in that band. But uh, and I have a connection through the group Walkaway, as you know, with uh, Chris Zawadzki. I have a, a connection with Bernard Maselli. And so he uh, had been playing, you know, with me for the last uh, three or four years also. This record was kind of an excuse to uh, put these musicians together and, and play music that I hadn't recorded yet. Some of the tunes are new, but most of them are older songs that never were recorded that I loved. And I always played, but they just never got on a record. You're going to hear some of this, and you're going to hear also some new things from my my next project, which is a record called uh, Rolaja Fufu, which hasn't come out yet, but I'm still working on it. You know, we have all the music, we just have to finish it. I'm actually doing a, uh, a pledge music campaign. It's like um, you ask people to pre-order the record so that we can make the record. It's not like a donation, it's because you actually you get the record um, but the thing is is nowadays there's no real record companies we we make the records ourselves now and it's becoming harder and harder because cds don't sell as much as they used to with streaming and 
piracy and all this other type of uh, ways of making it so musicians don't get paid, we have to look for new ways to uh, bring music to our fans. It's called Pledge Music. You can go to pledgemusic.com and find my name. And uh, and if you like my music, then uh, you can go in uh, some uh, contribution. This is all new music. And uh, the title is a clue as to what the music is. But I don't want to tell you what it is, but... I'm telling you that the title, it's kind of like a, like a puzzle, if you, and uh, you can figure it out. It's Ro, La, Ja, Fu, Fu. That's the title of the record. It'll be uh, probably coming out, I'm hoping, uh, early next year. The best thing is, if people go to this Pledge Music site, I actually have small recording that you can listen to that has a little pieces of all the music. You can hear it. The important thing, I, I should tell you, this new uh, band is a quintet. I'm very excited about it. It's, uh, again, Marvin Smitty Smith on drums, the incredible uh, bassist, uh, of course, Bernard Marcelli. Then we have one more addition. Uh, his name is Mateusz Klinowicz. We're very excited to have uh, this new addition of violin to the music. Dean Brown here, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in the concert in Guogo. Thank you very much.